in the NIV, it says, however, I consider my life worth nothing, nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's the scripture God challenged me with yeah, at the end of last year. I want to just give you verse, where? 22. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. First of all, my brother, my sister, may you know who is compelling you. I'm now compelled by the Holy Spirit. I'm forced. I'm driven. I'm controlled by the Holy Spirit to do the following. May that be your life. Because easily we could be controlled by fear, controlled by our opinion, controlled by things to do certain things. But let it be true that we can say, I'm forced to do this under the control of the Holy Spirit. Man, that's the way. May God help you. May God help me. That we will understand that, that concept. Amen. Compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen. Not knowing what will happen. In many ways, there's a lot of things that we will not know what's happening in this year coming. Think of many nations, many places, many continents, many the Middle East, Russia, Ukraine, so many other places. God is shaking. God is shaking. God is shaking everything. And He's going to not become less. He's going to become more. Because God is bringing you and me into the place of that what has eternal value that's the only that's the only thing that will stand in your life build yourself into the word of god and you will stand amen nations must be established in god's word anybody say amen, amen. not knowing what will happen to me i only know that in every city that the holy spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. Oh, what an encouragement. The church could go through a lot of things, you know, and the churches could ask, what, what? Pastors must say, what must I tell you? Think of a congregation. What must we tell you? Half of them are blown up. Um, the other half, we don't know if we will see you next week. If your brother, your sister, your child, your mother, who will be here next week. Uh, we don't know. But one thing. One thing, the pastor in Gaza, the pastor in Ukraine, the pastor among all the rubble and the gruesome whatever, could say, we don't know what hardships we need to face. However, let us not consider our life worth anything, but let our aim be to finish the course and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given us. Amen. May we have that eternal perspective like we would desire and pray that the church in Gaza will have also to make that commitment. Then we can break through. Then we can break through. But the difference was compelled by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit didn't say, um, do this so that I can get you into the place so that you will write uh, more than half of the New Testament for the, the Church of Christ for the next two, three thousand years. And for the sake of that, to do that and bring that quality forth for the uh, nations in generation upon generation upon generation to build the church based on the letters that you're going to write from a prison Understand that calling, therefore, let's go to Jerusalem. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> we want encouragement. We want to go if we understand a lot of things. But the only thing the Holy Spirit said was, you will go with me. I'm going to control you. You will be compelled by me. And what is laying ahead is hardship and presence. That's all. <laughs> I mean, Lord, you can at least have given him some three points, three pointers about how it's going to be worth it to lay down his life. Instead of looking into that and see, my flesh could say, what a waste. 
And there's things in your life, my brother and my sister, where you could say, what a waste. Where Holy Spirit wants to lead you into so that you give your life as a seed for 30, 60, 100 fold harvest wherever God has placed you to be. But you can pray as far as you want. God's not going to reveal to you the detail because he wants you to be dependent on him. He wants you to be dependent on him. I consider, is there nobody with the Amplified? Lord, have mercy on me. Can I find somebody in the world with the Amplified? Okay, if you can project and or read it over the mic. But I do not consider my life Now he's going to read it again and read it slower so that I can follow also. <laughs> so, but now what I want you to do is I want you to see the churches in Gaza, the churches in Ukraine blown up. There's nothing left, but they come together somewhere. I hope that nothing will fall on them. I want you to see the church where they are going through what hellish circumstances. And I want you to hear them making that commitment as you do that today with them. Can we believe it for them and with them? But I do not consider my life as something of value or dear to me, so that I may with joy finish my course and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus. To testify faithfully Amen. Amen. With scripture even, go and say, God, I want to pray this with your children in that place. I want to pray this with those guys going through this stuff. Are you with me? Because you are praying the word. When you pray the word, you're praying in God's perfect will. And by faith, you're putting yourself there for intercession that God said you must do. And to say, I'm grabbing the hand of those Christians still alive in that place. Saying, why God, why God? And some start to curse the name of Jesus. And some say, it's not worth following Jesus. Let's die for Muhammad. Let's die for Allah. And, and see it as martyrdom. As that is the encouragement that millions see and face and, and respect and admire in nations and on the streets in the cities of the world. They admire that and talk about it. They stand for that. They go on the street with what you call it, riot. They stand for that because they see something. How these guys... If mom is dead, if this is one is dead, if the children are under the rubble, thousands of them, and don't know if they are dead, we find courage in the fact that we lay down our life for Allah. And we are, have the honor to be martyred for Him. But that is in deception. But a thousand times more, we're supposed to understand and tell them who was the one on the cross who willingly gave himself, and how we in him, Jesus Christ, has given us everything. May God help us that we will grow up. May God help us that we will wake up. Amen. And even if you start to pray scriptures like this, that for this year the church going to come to pray that prayer. God's going to help the church that we will get into this place. Are you with me? Okay, we are talking about, what's the, what does the pamphlet say? Tell your neighbor, do it again. Uh, tell the guy with attitude. Okay, I can hear how some of your attitudes sound like sis. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, what are we saying? Do it again. Go for it. 
Seven times, perfect, complete, Sabbath rest with God, rest in God's perfect work. The challenge will be six times leading up to the seventh time. Guys, what are we saying? Seven has to do with perfection. Perfection, something that is complete. Sabbath rest with God, what does that mean? God created in six days, he created the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested. And he, after six days, he said what he did was very good. Very good. When you would work with God, it will be very good. Are you with me? But the key is to work with God. God must help us in that. But this whole concept of about seven times, Sabbath, Sabbath rest with God. In that place, when he created you and me on the sixth day, he brought us into the seventh day where we can be with him. Commune with him, rest with him. And as Christ is my rest, Christ is my peace, Christ is the place of safety, Christ is the place of stability, my Sabbath rest. From the seventh day, he sends us forth into what we need to do. Are you with me? So you need to go in God's peace because God's peace will protect you, protect you against very stupid decisions. If you are led by his peace. And the most stupid decision that you can make is when something is excellent, it's an excellent opportunity. One plus one is two. It's just the right thing to do. And you don't wait on Holy Spirit on when you must do it. That you call a waste. That you really call a waste. Are, are you with me? And that's our challenge. In this season, when, when the Bible in so many facets talk about the end times, that the end times has to do with the timing, timing, timing. Everybody say timing. timing. Say timing. 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 <laughs> okay. So look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say timing. You know tomorrow morning. Tell one another timing. It's all about timing because you need to understand the times but to understand the times is so that you will be on time and you are ready in the exact Kairos time things need to happen. You are still here. Okay. The challenge is, the challenge is six times leading up to the seventh. Now we're going to look at a few examples, but don't go there. Just keep it here. We're going to look at the examples of guys. Eh, you know the one six times around Jericho. And on the second day, if at least there was a crack in the wall, okay. Uh, and the next day, if there's at least one meter of the wall started to fall, if by the fifth day at least the ground started to shake, then we are encouraged, we are getting somewhere. But up to day number six, we are getting nowhere. And the danger in our lives with things that God wants to give us in uh, breakthroughs is that guy is in, that lady is in day six. You look at her and tomorrow she testifies, the walls have fallen, the things happen. You've done it, but you are in day four. Everybody said, do it again. So tomorrow we're going to do it again, and nothing happened. There was not even something more valuable. We were not even more excited. We actually had a temptation to be less excited. We had a temptation to have less faith, to be less positive, to become negative. That temptation is just more and more if you must do it. Another day, nothing happened. Another day, nothing happened. Until day seven, oh, God got desperate. He said, okay, on the last day, seven times in one day. Now, you can do that principle out of frustration. I'd rather do it under God's obedience. So there's a time when you are put in an intensity. Like with that seven days around Jericho. But the, the question is, will you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in it? Holy Spirit waited, waited, waited. Genesis 1, he waited. He was hovering over the face of the waters. He was hovering. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. Until then God said. And when he said, let there be light, in that split second, Holy Spirit did it. And there was light. 
but he was just hovering. So the Holy Spirit over your life is hovering. Your, God's hand is over your life, the Holy Spirit. He's over your life. He's over your life. And he's waiting for you to utter the word of God under the guidance of the Spirit. To speak the word when God tells you to speak the word. And when you speak forth into his perfect will, he hears God saying, and like the Holy Spirit heard the Father saying, let there be light. When the Holy Spirit hear the Father saying it over your life, boom, it will just happen. But are you willing for the process of that challenge of six times? Where you feel and where all of hell is there to discourage you to stop so that you will not have your breakthrough. Not have your breakthrough. We go quickly. The first one. Heavenly provision in your expectation. Heavenly provision. You can read there. Okay, 1 Kings 18. Go and look toward the sea. He told his servant, this is Elijah. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. Everybody say, go back. Say that with attitude. Go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, the king, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Oh, come on, man. Um, you have an experience. You went there six times, and the seventh time, there was not a coral key from a bulky. How can he say a thing of... Go, go, because you better run, because the rain is coming. Um, the voice of experience of your six times that you went and you saw nothing, and on the seventh time you just saw a little volky. Maybe you must drown in the, in the flood. Rather not, by God's grace in Jesus' name. He went... There is nothing there. You go and you do that for the Lord. There's nothing. You, there's no breakthrough. You started to speak to people about Christ. Nothing happened. They just swear at you. You started to trust God with your finances. You started to pay the tithes and the offerings. But nothing even get worse, got worse. You started. Do you know when is the seventh time with God? Do you know? Please, my brother. Don't be a foolish virgin, because in the, in the time when nothing is happening, that's when the wise virgin got the oil. The stupid, no, what's the other word? The foolish, the foolish virgin. Were, they were fools, why? Because they did nothing in the time that when they didn't have to do something. The foolishness was exposed when somebody don't expect you to do something and still you go and do. When you see, this is not necessary now, but still, everybody say, but still. But still, you have this time with God. But still, you have this fellowship. But still, you think upon the things above. But still. You put that seed out there, but still you visit that family member, but still you phone that person, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your whoever, and nothing is, they're just going to swear at you, nothing is going to change in your life. It's not about them to change, it's about you to become more like Christ. That's why you make contact with your family, that's why you build relationship, if, even if you fear rejection, you're going to do it because you are becoming more like him, Jesus Christ. The more you do it, even if that person is Going crazy and, and like a whatever. Every time you walk in obedience, you're coming closer, 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 closer to him. You and your God. Are you with me? I hope so. I trust so. My brother, I want to encourage you. The church is going to come into that place. There will be, there will be a body. The body uh, there will be a body of Christ that will understand how to endure, endure. Look at Revelation 2 and 3, the seven churches in the end time. And how many times the theme comes through of to the one who will endure, the one that will hold unto, the one that will be steadfast, the one will, the end what shall I do, what shall I know. Are you with me? 
Deersettingsvermoe in Engels is? Perseverance. For those who persevere, the following will happen. That is a, one of the biggest challenges. Yes, it's a challenge to repent from all these things. But then, after repentance, persevere. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Because in that doing it again, you're becoming more stable, 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 stability. You're just growing in stability. So when the storm comes, God can brag about the house that's built on the rock, the foundation of who is his son. He's going to use you to brag about himself. And you have the awesome, awesome, awesome honor to be used by him. Where he wants to brag about himself. We are still here? Heavenly provision in expectation. What's your expectation from heaven? You look up into the heaven. There's a lot of scriptures about that. About looked up and there's nothing. But yeah, there's some hundred. Hundred. My thousand grand that I wanted to give away. 121. I look up to the mountains. Where shall my help come from? Where shall my help come from? Lift up. Psalm 24. 24. Psalm 24. Hey. So he's, uh, you find a lot, a lot of scriptures, but in looking up, what is your expectation? So many times God will say, look, and the person will say, a, a, a dad will say to his child, look at me. What is he saying? Give attention. Give attention. You know, like that one scripture also, give strict attention. Give strict attention. When he says, watch and pray. In the context of the, uh, the, the end time church in, in Matthew, when he says, watch and pray, that watch has to do with give strict attention. Be cautious. Be voorzichtig om Recht te kijk. Be verzachtig. Be cautious. To give strict attention. So that you are not deceived. Not deceived. But in prayer, remember that is stop. That is put your focus. Put your position. Get your position right before God. That's prayer. Amen. May there be heavenly provision. Number two. Healing from hindrances. Elijah sent the messenger to say, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. In the Jordan. And your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Wave his hand over the spot and cure me from my leprosy. Too many times in prayer we give God the strategy. Are you with me? Too many times in prayer we give God the strategy. And then even if God doesn't do it, we, we are not happy with it. God, I trust you that you will come and do this, 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 this. But you know that this, 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 so that that will happen. God, this is wasting your time before the Lord because he's not going to do this, 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 so that that happens. He's going to do, just let it happen. Can God be God? I hope so. In your life. He will be God. But will he be God in you, in your strategies, in your challenges, in that, in you, the healing that you need for your life? Now I'm, I'm cautious to say the following. You know, healing, physical healing is sometimes a, a, a difficult theme. Because many books of why some are healed and some not. Why you find this auntie, she's powerful in prayer. She knows the word. She is right with God. She's walking in humility. She's a servant. But she's struggling. Struggling with her health. Who saw people like that? And then you see some Waramampara guy. Yes, he, he came to the Lord and he had some problem and somebody prayed for him. Boom. And he's healed. Praise the Lord for his healing. But the logic doesn't make sense. <laughs> Him. But what about this other lady? Sometimes there's a level of maturity in someone 
where it's like a thorn in the flesh, where the thorn in the flesh is to keep the focus on God. And I'm not saying disease and sickness is used by God, but I, all, I can say that all things work for the good for those who love him. That per, a person's healing is maybe not instant, boom. But an attitude towards God that all things can work for the good, that can be instant. Sometimes a real instant miracle, but I can choose such an attitude in the name of Christ. But if I have issues with people and, and do the, have issues with, that sickness must grow in your soul, but that could, there could be instant healing if I repent from that one. Are you with me? But healing from hindrances, this is a man, this is a powerful man and as a soldier and as a commander, and this leprosy is hindering the purpose that, that is there for his life. If there's any physical condition that is according to God and hindering you to live out your calling, then definitely you just stand on the word. But you need to know once again what God is saying. Know what God is saying. Know what God is saying. Hello? But this king must humble himself and in this chachi water. You know, is the water there on the other side not even better? This guy disrespect me. He humiliated me. He didn't even come out. I came all this way. Time to be, take offense. And as long as you take offense against people in what you believe they did wrong, you are a, you're the joke for the demons. Devil can eat his popcorn while looking at your life and enjoy the comedy. Because you know how to take offense against people. This one did that, that one did that, that one did that. No, we're going to grow up in Jesus' name. No. He's not even fighting with you. He's enjoying what he's seeing, how you fight with yourself and fight with others. Mm -mm. Not anymore. But there was a lady, a servant lady with Naaman. This big boss, this big army general, this guy that... That uh, royal, the palace knows him. This guy that, I mean, when he came to the nation, he first went to the king. And the king said, I, can do not, I cannot do anything. I cannot bring healing to you. And the king asked the prophet, what must we do? And the prophet said, send him. Send him to me so that he, that big shot, that guy will know that there's a prophet from God in this nation. But he didn't show the prophet. He just gave him the command from God. Seven times. If he stopped, oh, come on, man, after the fourth time. Now, how do you wash seven times? Now, we go in, we wash. Okay, we come out. I don't know. Must he first dry himself and then go and wash again? Or is it every day? I don't know. It was seven days. We must ask him. Remember, we must ask Naaman one day. Was it seven times, come out, dry yourself, get in again? Or was it every day, once? Or? And so, all the servants, everybody's there. What happened? Nothing. Second day, what happened? Everybody, all the rumors there, on, it's everywhere, on YouTube or wherever. Nothing, 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 nothing happened. We are at day five, nothing. This is going to be a chamorz. <laughs> It's day five, and not even 1% of his leprosy changed. There he's going to be shamed. He's going to be a joke, man. This leader, this army general, where everybody looking up to him when he says left, the thousands of soldiers go to the left. He's going to make a spectacle of himself. We are at day six, and nothing changed. My brother, my sister, God will deal with a lot of stuff in the do it again. A lot of flesh, a lot of image, a lot of things he can build in your life. And in what's happening in the six days around Jericho before? What's happening in the six times going down in the river? Hello. What's happening in the six times that that? That servant must go and see there's nothing. Come back, there's nothing. There's no rain coming. 
What's happening during that time in your six day period is a lot, a lot of character, a lot of stability, a lot of faith. A lot of anchoring your faith in your relationship with Christ. Don't waste the time. Why will God, God with all respect will not be nasty. God with all respect will not waste time. But that six days is valuable. Because that's the foundation even in the creation. Day one, two, three, four, five, six. The, the foundation, the, the platform to reveal his glory. Through his sons at the glory of the Lord will be on them. They will look like him. And Adam and Eve created in his image, in his likeness. So there's a culmination of time for perfection. That's with the word, with the letter seven. You will have your seventh day where God will have a perfect impact in your life. You will not be perfect yet. Because that's only in the day when we see him face to face. But God's going to do a perfect work in your life. But will you go through the process of the six days? Number three. We talked about number three already. Victory over strongholds. The gates of Jericho were surely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. See. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his king and his fighting men. Where does he start? He's not giving the strategy. Do this, do that, do that. Then the wall's going to fall in, and you will see that I've given Jericho in your hand. That's what we're supposed to say in a normal conversation. Do this, do that, do that, do that, and you will see that I have given Jericho the city into your hands. No, 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 no. He expects you to believe it before the time, even before any circumstances change, even before any strategy, how logic or unlogic is given to you in your life. My brother, my sister, for your future, if you want to walk with God, if you want to be on a prophetic cutting edge with him and what he's going to do in and through you in the city, in this nation, and in the nations of the earth, Hopefully you will be on cutting edge in what he's doing in the nations of the earth. Some of you are on cutting edge in what you pray for Israel. Some of you are just walking like the priest past the guy that was robbed by the thieves. Priest, too busy with his own agenda. Not sensitive in the spirit. But some of you guys are on cutting edge in what you pray for people in Gaza and Ukraine and wherever. People in starvation in Africa or wherever. People in the townships going through certain things. That guy tomorrow, they're going to cheat on his wife. You're praying. God, I pray for the for marriages in Bluefontaine in the name of Jesus, that your fire will be on, on them. More on the men than on the women. No, not like that. <laughs> but pray accurately. You can be on cutting edge. Come into that place that you're part of the church of the firstborn, Jesus Christ, that you will be understanding how to walk with God in an accurate way. Then when God's going to move, you're going to be there. You're going to move with him. You will not be a spectator. You will participate. You will be a co-worker with him. Oh, man, let's have such a life. Uh, is, is that good with you? I hope. I believe. So on the last day, seven times. And then, uh, then the wall of the city will collapse. And the army will go up. They had no... Confirmation. They had no experience about that. They've never heard about such, abs about such absurd, gekkelijke, ridiculous strategy thing ever said before. And God will give you that type of strategy so that you will focus on him and depend on him alone. Amen. Are you with me? Next one. Perseverance in stature. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. When calamity strikes, when things happen, when somebody is nasty to you, there you fall. When this is happening, when this finance is not working out, oh, there you're gone. When, when somebody talk bad about you, oh, then you're gone. If somebody tuned you and they didn't do it in love, you know, when you leave a banner outside, of the church, we will first slaughter you. Uh, there's nobody that did that. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, we forgive him in the name of the Lord. 
I'm just sorting out my heart before tomorrow. <laughs> now, what am I saying? Ah, what am I saying, my brother, my sister? The righteous, the issue is not the falling. This issue is the standing up. Why? The righteous, because he's the person with stature. He's the person with, there's victory in your heart. And if you're going to be alive tomorrow, victory is alive in you. So when you fall, you will rise for victory. You will rise for victory. You will bounce back, if I were there, like they always say. Why? Because Christ, the overcomer, the champion of the universe is in you. And because the champion of the universe is in you, you will rise. Because the righteous means the one with stature. Righteous. You are righteous or you are in Christ your righteousness. Be theological words. But it's all about you have stature in Christ. But only if Christ in you or you in Christ. That is the only stature you have. But when you have stature, when you fall, you know how to rise, you rise and you go on. Amen. Are you still here? Perseverance, number five. Faithfulness in prayer. Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. That you is God. If you don't have anything to do and you just want to relax, take your Bible. I've done it with a few. And you know these days, in the old days, when, it's, when the you is God and not you, a person, it was a capitalist. Who remember that in the old days? Now I like doing that when I just want to relax. I take a song and I read it in context. But then the you, I make it just a capital U. Because there's some places where there's a you and a you and you and you and every second and sometimes every third you is not you, God. It's you, a person. And sometimes the prophet speaks and he says, you people, this and this and this. And then he speaks to God, the next verse. He doesn't say, then he, the prophet said to God. But actually, then he was speaking to God. And then the next moment in the prayer is God speaking to the people. And then the you is then actually a small letter. I don't know why I said that, but that is for accuracy. Maybe you must just do that. Sit. And when you read, the, especially the prophets, but with the Psalms and other, other places, when you realize and you are sure this is God, that you is God, make it a capital, capital letter. The he. Sit net I extra binky op. Make it a capital letter. That he is God. But make sure, because there were some places where I had to go back to other places. And is this now God? Is this now the person? Maybe do that. Enjoy it. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. And the other translations say seven times a day I pray. I pray. I call on you. I'm not saying you better pray seven times a day. Otherwise you're not having a breakthrough. All I'm saying is, in this seven times of prayer, maybe you had your third prayer. If I call the, the, uh, the example of seven as the perfect timing, the, the moment of breakthrough, the moment of perfection. Maybe in your prayer, with what God has for you to pray, you are at day four. That other guy, his days are very shorter. <laughs> Days of prayer. But what I'm saying is, please, my brother, my sister, don't give up. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. You pray for that. You pray for that. Hello. Hello. That old auntie whose son I led to the Lord the night before he died, when she said at the funeral, you know, the brother said, hey, my mom prayed for him for more than 10, 12 years. Us three brothers, we got saved. For the last 10 to 12 years, he, she's praying for her son that is already in the 60s, she's in her 90s. She prayed. I get into the situation. I just felt the Lord said, and boom, and we lead him to the Lord. I had one half a prayer. She, her seven times prayer, her seven times was long. But her prayer, her prayer pushed me, pushed me into God's will. Are you with me? There will be a day when people will be pushed in the right positions with the prayer that you continued with. 
that you went and you went and you went and then went. The wall will fall. Everybody say the wall will fall. But you better be faithful. Okay? Number five, faithfulness. Number six, restoration of God's resources. Proverbs 6, people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger. Do not despise his hunger when he is starving. If, yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. It doesn't pay to steal. It doesn't pay to steal for, from government with a tax. It doesn't pay to not give your tie. It doesn't pay to withhold the blessing where if God would say to me, I must give David a controller a thousand rand. I don't think God would ever say that. But if he would have said something like that, you know, and I don't give it, you know who am I? I'm not just a guy that's a little bit stingy. I'm a thief. Because when God said give thousand rand to him, God meant that thousand rand is not yours. I, the Lord, wants that thousand rand in the hands of David. So that belongs to David according to my father. But you decide in stinginess, no. And from that moment when God said, I must give that car to Niku, and I'm driving the car, I'm driving a stolen car. You like that one? That's how it is. Don't be a thief. You will sevenfold. You'll have to give back. I withhold that thousand rand. The enemy has something to stand on in my life that sevenfold it must be stolen. Sevenfold. I will have to pay sevenfold for me withholding that thousand rand from that man. That's just a different way of seeing stealing. Where 99% of us would say, no, I will never steal. Um, make sure what you have is what God said, this is yours. Because God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And seed to the sower, what is in your hand? This money is seed to be sown. This money is bread to enjoy for yourself. You better know when, when is it seed, when is it bread. Okay, Restoration. Sorry, can I say a last point on that point six, restoration of resources. Guys, there's so many, so many, so many. What God ordained, what God had for the church from the time even when Christ came. There's so many. And so many times, so many people in generations in the church messed up with the resources. But the word says the riches of the world will be given to the church. For the purpose of God. For the purpose of God. So what the enemy had stolen in your previous generations, we stand in Jesus' name. As a sevenfold, what was stolen from your grandmother and your grandmother's 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 grandmother who wanted to do something for God. And what she had, what, how she gave her life so that all that resources can be used for the kingdom. It was stolen by the enemy. We call that scripture for the, your generations. What, whatever the enemy stole, by according to the word of God, he will give back. If you can be trusted with the resources, according to God, it will be given. But if the resources will be the servant for God's purposes through your life, but sometimes we work for the purpose of having a salary at the end of the month. No, you work in the workplace because you're an ambassador of Christ. You do it as if unto the Lord, not if you get a salary. Are you with me? First six months, half of you know the story. Okay, sleep for five minutes. Go for it. But the other half. So when I started with Creari, I had nothing. I gave 90... 90 students, I gave class, I gave music theory, I gave drama, I gave perspective, started that time, I band, and all that stuff. Start 7 o'clock in the evening, finish 10 o'clock at night. VPS uh, mother-in-law, she and her friend, they were in their 50s. 
I think somewhere in their 50s, they had class with me 9 o'clock and half past 9 to 10 o'clock at night. And so they always brought me pizza. I said, no, you are gone. We want some value for our, our class. You must just wake up. So I had the honor to wake up always with a pizza, you know, 9 o'clock in the evening. But, okay, man, sorry. What did I want to say? <laughs> so when I started, when I started, it was six months going right through. And after six months, me doing this, and at that stage, you don't have a cell phone. So then I'm in the office, then I'm giving class there, then I'm giving class there. So I bought a 100-meter telephone cable. So that, because I cannot be everywhere at once in the office also, so wherever the cable was outside the church, they followed the cable, knowing that Cornelius is there, or he's in that room giving class there. Or, and I said to myself, I left the medical school. I, I left the medical school with a bursary and a passion about that. What the, the words was, what the hell am I doing with my life? Is this what I'm supposed to do? And I had to fight that rubbish voice. Are you with me? And after six months, when I would go to my sister in, in Holland to go and visit there, okay, at least I have some money. But all the money of all that was those classes of nine, ten hours, eleven hours every day for six months was paid in at a certain bank account. And then I heard the message, no, there's some leaders that don't have money for their salaries. So that money is going to be used for the salaries. Uh, at that stage, I don't have 10 rand to go to pick and pay. So from Agapa, I run. Can you believe it? I ran um, three kilometers to pick and pay, get myself a bread and milk, whatever, run back to be in time within half an hour for the next piano class. So, I was walking there, and I am moaning with the Lord. This is so unfair. Here, yeah, I don't have 10 rand for petrol for my folla. I walk to pick and pay and back to get some food. And all this money of the six months must be given to those leaders for a salary. That's, that's. And you know what God said? You don't want to know. He said, so, if you're not going to get the money... Will you still develop these people for me? <laughs> I, I remember that when you go from pick and play hyper, and then you go over the bridge. There's the Universitas Hospital, the, the building. You know? You know that place? You go over that bridge. I will never in my life forget that bridge. God said it while I was on that bridge walking there. So I just walk off. I count the lamp poles. One... I was just ignoring straight. There's no, I know the answer, but I, I cannot give that answer now. And about, about started to pray in tongues because I realized I'm going, when you know you're going in the wrong direction, we know you're going to make a, a rotten, rotten decision. You start to pray in tongues. You start to pray in tongues, my brother, my sister, and you will find the strength to make the right decision. Really. Just started to pray in tongues, and about the, the 10th one, I said, okay, Lord, if I get nothing of the six months of work, me alone thinking, in any case, I'm crazy in what I did. If I get nothing, I will still do it for you. But you know, that was not the end. Because if there's no joy in the offering, it's no honor to God, and it's corrupt seed that you put in the ground so that you will just harvest a lot of weeds. So there must be joy in the offering. So I had to say it over and over and over again until it become a praise offering, until there could become a joy and a privilege to do it for you, Lord, even though there's no finances. God helped me with that one to have a breakthrough. But when I got home on my bed, a check with all the money of the whole six months, it was a setup from God. <laughs> God will set you up. God will set you up, that you will do it for him, for him. And that what he's entrusted to you will be in his hands. You will not touch it. But God will tell you, with that money, with that, with that jaguar that you, that you earthed, 
or that you inherited from your grandmother. That jaguar is going to go for that. Hello? So you put some of your, uh, I don't know if you guys, hello and bye. God give you a cat or whatever. Whatever he gives you. My brother, when last about your salary and your provision, you know, mommy is paying this and daddy is paying that for me. When last did you sit with God and say, and said, Lord, what must I do? This month, he said this for certain people is get him involved in your strategy, strategic planning with your finances and resources. And God can trust you with so much, so much more. Because he's looking for the church that the riches of the world. He can entrust the riches of the world to the church. If he can find the church in the nations. If he can find the church and millions of churches, hopefully in Jesus' name. That will have the maturity to understand how to work with money. Because that was the tool to get one of the 12 core guys to deny. And... Give Jesus over for 30, 30 pieces. Okay, here we are now, number seven. We are, we are rushing. Hey, forgiveness in brokenness. In brokenness. Jesus answered, now I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. I have forgiven that guy, but he doesn't help. He never changed. I can say to him again, I forgive you. But he has such a rotten attitude. I don't want to say it. You're not saying it to him so that he changes. You're saying it to him because you respect your God. And because you are grateful for how God has forgiven you. If that man did something wrong to me, and he belittled me, or just what I, and he tuned me in front of the other students, and, and I will show him how God normally forgives me. And with that intensity, I will forgive him. So you forgive someone, and when you forgive someone, you forgive him in a way that you believe God has forgiven you. Unless you're, unless you're a fake and a liar. Because you're supposed to be ambassador of Christ. So how does forgiveness look through your life? How, does it, how do you portray forgiveness? The way that God portrays forgiveness towards you. But in that sense also, you better understand forgiveness. You start at a place and you call it respect for the blood. Respect for the blood. You don't argue about, yeah, but Lord, this and this and this. Respect for the blood means I will take my forgiveness. I will not then, what are, what are the grace in the sense that now I can do whatever because God will forgive. That's also not respect for the blood. I respect the blood that I will take what the blood has done for me. But then I will respect the blood that I will not just use it as a manipulating tool. To say, oh, I can do whatever I want. I will in any case be forgiven tomorrow. I will deal with the sin. I will deal with the sin. I can fall seven times, but somewhere, somewhere I'm going to learn how to stand and not to fall. I'm going to learn how to stand and not to fall. So that this haha religion thing is not with me anymore. This sudden urge to judge, sudden urge to take offense, sudden urge to, to walk in bitterness, it's, it's not there anymore. It's just gone. It's just gone. I couldn't say a word without a swear word. I couldn't say a sentence without a swear word, and as you all know. And then I gave my life to Christ, and I said, you must stop your prt, and because you must leave all the prt that the enemy give you all the prt, and start to serve the Lord. Until the lady said to me, how do, what do you think God is saying about your testimony? And how you testify? And then I had to repent. And that happened quite intense. So I didn't swear at all until I got married, and I got angry enough Again, but um, I'm still repenting. Don't worry. All I'm saying to you, my brother, in his grace, in his grace, you have stability. When you understand forgiveness, you understand love. When you understand forgiveness, you understand love. Because the foundation to forgive is, I will be patient with you. And because I am patient with you, I have the capacity to forgive. Love is 
Patient. The foundation of love, love is patient. For those who were not here last week, love is patient. What is it saying? It says love is secure, is stable. There's a stability in love and the stability of love. The first foundation of love is patience. God, love, God's love for me is stable. It's secure. It's, it's a safe place. God's love for you is a safe place. And you translate that with patience. With patience, I will be there for you. You will not just cope with the situation, but you will be stable in God's love in that situation. Patience. Amen. Is that all? All that I'm saying with this, do it again. This is going to be a key like never before, my brother, in the end time. This is going to be a key. And the word says, when Jesus is coming, blessed is he who is found by the master in what state? In a place where he is still busy, still busy doing what he was called to do. When Jesus comes, when, when the breakthrough is there, blessed is the one that he will be still be busy doing faithfully what God has called him to do. For certain facets in your life, you have a testimony that the seventh day breakthrough came. But in other areas of your life, you are in the second day. You are in the third time around the walls. You are in the fourth time, go and look if there's anything of rain. Coming back to say nothing, not even 1%. Nothing. So in different areas, go and hear from Holy Spirit with the different areas of your life. So that you don't abort the processes. And so that you don't destroy that what God actually wants to give you. Amen? God help us. We need your help, Lord. I pray for every man, woman in this place. That they will understand what you've placed in them through Jesus Christ. That they have this capacity to persevere because of the one living inside of them. They have this stability through the word of God that will never fail. God, everything will be shaken except your word. Help us then to dive into your word. Help us to embrace. Help us to respect. Help, to, help us to build a life with your word and through your word, Lord. So that eternal, is, eternal stability will be part of our lives part of our love relationships, part of our dreams, part of our desires, our, our conduct, our attitudes towards other people. Not to judge, but to honor. Because you, you gave yourself for each one of us. Thank you for that awesome privilege, Lord. And I pray that we'll be found faithful like the wise virgins and wise builders to mark the time and to do what we're supposed to do in a time when nobody is expecting it of us. Make us faithful in that we trust you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.